Hi, thanks for tuning into Jones Knows. Today is a very complex strand woven bamboo repair. We had a uh, an expansion problem on this floor and taking the whole floor apart was not an option. Uh, we had to actually make the last row an inch skinnier than what it originally was. We had to take a five inch floor, make it about three and a quarter inches wide um, and still keep the floor as a floating floor. So first let's show you what we did. We had to take up the expansion area, um, take out all the boards and then we relayed it leaving uh, a little more expansion in the areas that we were able to uh, cut along the walls and some of the cabinets. So once we got all of our kitchen area back together um, we then had to deal with the fact that our last row is no longer going to fit. Now ideally, you know, I would have taken the entire floor apart and made the necessary changes and, and, and reinstalled it, but unfortunately um, we have 600 feet on one side of the house, 600 feet on the other side of the house, and where the two halves come together um, is in the dead center of the house. So. A T-molding probably would have solved the problem. A T-molding would have allowed us to have one board, one row skinnier. Uh, we could have taken two inches off a board, you know, T-molding are two and a quarter inches wide. The customer wanted the floor to look like it did without a T-molding in the center of their home. So our only option was to use what I call tabs. Tabs are a piece of wood that will go under both sides of the last row. It'll go half under one row, half under the other row, and it will have glue on the entire tab. So what we're, allowed, what we're doing is we are gluing the two boards together, but we're keeping it as a floating floor. But um, when I also put those last two boards together where the two rows meet, I then 22'd each of the boards in opposite or in the same direction basically then I placed glue in between the two boards and see what you don't want to do is glue down the floating floor so it's a, what we did was glue it together the tabs did the job I used uh, very thin very thin pieces of wood probably no thicker than uh, less than an eighth of an inch um, half went under one row, half went under the new row that goes down. So the, the row that was still on the floor had it already under. And then we laid our board, our last board, cut on the 22 degree angle on top of the tab that was sticking out. And then we placed weight on the floor. Um, it worked amazing. You know, I happen to know this customer pretty well and this job was over a month ago and we had no issues. Um, it looked amazing, uh, performed amazing. The floor is still allowed to expand. Uh, you can't feel the tabs under it. And uh, it was a successful installation. We were able to save the floor without having to take up 1,200 feet of, uh, of flooring to, to repair the expansion problem. Unfortunately, I didn't do the original installation. Uh, so many, so often, I get called out to these repairs because they were installed improperly. Uh, I can tell you, you know, the biggest part of the problem with the expansion was somebody installed the floor first and then the kitchen cabinets. Big no-no. You never under, you never install kitchen cabinets on top of a floating floor. So that is another reason why we were not able to take the floor apart. But the uh, the the key was. We picked the skinniest part of the house, uh, a little hallway where the two sides of the house met, and then that's where we placed our tabs, and uh, it was a successful uh, repair. It came out great. You know, I hope you uh, can tell from the video, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to send them. Thanks for watching.